in this demonstration of Net Backup Self Service, I'm going to take you through the elements that the NSS administrator will see on a day to day basis. Uh, you can see when the NSS administrator logs in, which they can do either through a username and password or other authentication methods like single sign on, can be used as well. Um, but they're presented uh, first of all with the dashboard. The dashboard gives an overview of all of the tenants within the system. Uh, the different locations, this relates to different master servers that are connected up to NSS, uh, an overview of computers picking out those which are using the most space, uh, and then again a, a, a display of uh, all of the data uh, within this system. Uh, the next tab along is the uh, tenants tab. Uh, this displays all the tenants that are currently in this system. Uh, for an enterprise system this could be all of the uh, departments or group companies uh, for a service provider, this could be uh, all of their customers. Uh, if you want to add tenants, you have the uh, option to manually add them down here. If I click Add Tenant, it'll come up with uh, an Add Tenant form that we need to go through and complete. Uh, alternatively, you can also add tenants through uh, the API. So if you're already maintaining them uh, within uh, another structure, uh, that can be uh, exported and passed into our API to uh, manage the tenants uh, and their users uh, within NSS. Uh, the computer list then, the uh, computer inventory contains all of the information about all of the computers that are under management uh, for the uh, different tenants. Uh, you can see in here we've got information about which tenant they're a member of but via this customer code, information on the actual uh, machine itself, its name, and also which protection type uh, the uh, machine is part of as well. There's various manual options in here for registering the computer, for updating its registration, and also uh, doing a refresh of, of the data that you'll see it on the screen as well, uh, as well as the ability to uh, remove it as well. Again, all of this can be uh, managed through the API, uh, and it'll be quite normal for a, a larger system uh, to have uh, the API linked up and to have a, uh, a regular feed of uh, new machine information into the uh, computer inventory. Uh, the next tag along then, this is the uh, locations tab. So this specifies uh, all the master servers that are connected up to the system. Here we've got two, but there's uh, no limit uh, to the amount of master servers that you can have hooked up to uh, NSS. Uh, again, if we wanted to add these, we can, we have a button down here that will uh, produce a form uh, and we can fill in all the details and uh, complete that. Next tab along then is uh, the protection level. Uh, so this is where we define all of the different protection types uh, on the left here. Uh, and you can see we can uh, build these out uh, for whatever uh, the requirements are for the different machines. Uh, you can see in here as well if I click on to SQL that the protection types will then have their own protection levels and within each level uh, we can define a number of uh, policies. There's some checking going on here to make sure that all of those policies are uh, valid uh, within the uh, net backup. Uh, and if they're not, then we're going to get some uh, exclamation marks. I've just set a few that up there so you can uh, see that. Uh, so you can see it's very easy to apply uh, these protection levels uh, when we go on to look at the tenant uh, to individual machines. And that protection level um, automatically puts that machine into these four policies. With 773, we can also add uh, more than uh, a machine into more than one uh, policy as well. Okay, imports. Uh, this is really if you're hooked up to uh, vCloud uh, Director, then uh, we can automate all the import of information for uh, the uh, computer inventory. Uh, and so that, that can be automatically be hooked up and uh, pulled into the system. The monitoring tab then, you're not really going to need to uh, come into here, but there's some uh, useful information. If, if you get a backup fail, this is going to stick around for a while. Also, if for some reason you wanted to do uh, a system sync, a system update, or a, a vCloud directory import on demand, uh, then you can uh, click on here and do all of that. Uh, but generally, you can, you can leave this alone and uh, all the uh, updates and scheduled tasks will, will carry on in the background. Finally then we can look at the usage tab because we're looking at it as the administrator view. 
we can see all of this information then broken down uh, via the tenant. Uh, the way that we are showing this at this level, uh, it shows obviously the previous uh, uh, consumed capacity. It shows that the new consumed capacity, anything that's expired, anything that's current, and also an average as well. And it'll show that for each of the tenants that you have within the system. This is similar when we go and look at the tenant view, we'll see a breakdown of that by uh, machine as well. So down here, we've got the export usage. And if I wanted to uh, click on that, it's gonna export it out as a CSV file. So that's the uh, main dashboard in the middle here. Uh, up here on the left, we've got the, uh, the traffic lights. Uh, so this is showing me how many uh, computers I have in the system, how many uh, maybe need some attention, maybe those uh, uh, particular machines haven't been backed up in the uh, time period threshold that we set. Uh, so that they'll show up in here. We have 19 machines that are unprotected, so they're not in uh, any policies, and that, that may be by design, and we have 18 that are uh, successfully backed up. Again, on here, we're seeing the total uh, capacity. Again, when we go down a tenant view, we can uh, make that into a, a percentage. Uh, and also on here, we've got information relating to uh, all of the uh, usage information, and we can view that uh, in a number of uh, different ways on a monthly basis. And if I wanted to uh, click into that, it'll, it'll show me uh, any of the uh, reports for the previous months as well. So for instance, we can go and have a look at uh, April data on here. Uh, if we had information on the other months as well, uh, we can go and look at that as well. Okay, so that's really all of the day-to-day -day tasks that a uh, NSS uh, administrator uh, can come in and uh, use on the system. Uh, there is uh, some further administration, which I'm not gonna go too much detail on here, but if you wanna change any of the uh, attributes in the portal, if you want to change anything in the requests, if you want to start changing themes, etc. All of that can be managed through uh, the application of this administration button up here. So I'll just take you through a very quick example of how we might change a theme. So if I click on the, uh, the theme tab down there, you'll see that we have the ability uh, to go in and change all the, all the different set settings. Uh, so we've got things for header, colors, menu, page, etc. And each of these colors can be set up. We can put in the, uh, the Pantene or the RGB colors. So we can very easily change the theme. If you want to change that to a service provider, to an enterprise, to a particular customer, it's very easy to come in here and change that. We've taken all of the uh, CSC, CSS settings and we've brought those uh, so that they can be managed uh, through the uh, admin console. And uh, in here, that really uh, gives you the ethos of how you can do all of the uh, administration in the system. It's all called click and point, and it can all be done uh, by a business user. As I said, I'm not going to go into more detail here, uh, but if you want to know more about this or uh, more, more about anything else, uh, then please look at the uh, documentation that is uh, available. Thank you.